All right, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at Pop OS 21.10. Now this is a beta version, so well, you know what to expect. All right, now before we dive in, let's quickly go and do full screen. This is a live environment. I'm yet to install it on my virtual machine. Now, I'm going to say sorry for installing this on my virtual machine even though I don't quite like it myself. It's because this is my only computer and uh well, Let's just say it's complicated right now for me to install another operating system on it, especially a beta version. All right, so let's go to display settings and let's change the resolution. 1920 by 1080, yep. We're going to keep these changes and there we go. All right, so first off, let's try and install Pop! OS on this virtual machine. Let's see how the procedure is language is English United States English US default keyboard yes obviously and now we're going to clean install pop OS uh, we're not going to encrypt or anything and this is the 20 gigabytes of space that I have reserved on this virtual machine I'm using gnome boxes if you're interested Okay, for the full name, let's give my name, and that's my username. All right, let's go next. We're going to choose a super strong password, and that's all right. Okay, we're not going to encrypt the drive because this is a virtual machine, and I'm going to get rid of it as soon as it's done. And I will see you guys after the installation. Okay, welcome to Pop! OS 21.10 Beta. Now, right off the bat, I noticed one thing. The spacing between the icons, it's different. It's bigger. Now, I intentionally went ahead inside settings like this. I went to appearance. No, I went to dock. And I think I changed it to 36 to small. Yeah, I changed this. But the difference I noticed is that... The spacing is different. So if I go back to my original machine, as you can see over here, the spacing is quite different. And this is also running at 36 pixels. So if I go to my own dock, yep, it's running at 36 pixels. Anyway, moving on. So first up, let's run a quick HTOP and see what kind of results we get. This is a fresh restart of the virtual machine now i already said sorry for this being a virtual machine but let's let's get on with it okay so on a fresh restart we're using 892 megabytes out of the five gigabytes that i assigned to this system not bad for gnome 40 and this is actually pretty 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 much standard for a modern operating system let's look at what kind of partitioning we have all right so by default now I installed this and this was a totally erase the disk and install the method and install on the system method so I didn't actually mess with anything. So by default it created out of the 20 gigabytes I assigned to it, it created a 16 gigabytes of root and a 4 gigabytes of swap. Now it appears that the swap is encrypted because it's using crypt swap. I could be wrong, this is my first time ever giving first impressions or reviewing a Linux desktop. I'm not reviewing but so if i make any mistake or if you guys think something is important if i'm missing something please any review is highly appreciated any feedback is highly appreciated okay let's let's move on let's see you name a and yes we are using 5.13 generic kernel now do we have neofetch installed i think i installed it on my last boot but it wasn't quite working well, so I had to restart it. So you will never get to see that video. Okay, fair enough. So we are on Pop! OS 21.10. We are running the, not the latest, but 5.13 kernel. We have only DPKGs. We don't have flat packs and snap support is not enabled out of the box. And this is the highlight of the show. We have GNOME 40.5. Now, this had been long awaited. 
the developers of System76 can actually fork GNOME 3.38 and maintain their own separate universe of that. It's it's cumbersome to say the least. So I think the move to GNOME 40.5 was a standard decision. It was a very good decision. And let's move on from it. NeoFetch, it's pretty as usual. Okay, let's dive into the settings first. Okay, general, we have our launcher. So when you press the super key, you open the launcher. So this is the launcher. We can also change it to workspaces. So when we press the super key, you will have these workspaces and you can switch between them. Isn't that cool? You can also have it open applications. And whoopsies, there appears to be no applications, but this is a beta version of the software. So it's all good. We're, we, we are going to try and install one single app though. We're going to see how it goes. We can, we by default, Cosmic Desktop shows both the workspaces and the application buttons. We can disable them, but let's just keep the workspaces button. And date and time, we can also change it to the left or to the right, or as it were, dead center. Now, whenever you change it to the right, the only difference this has with something like i forget the name but it was something like gnome da uh, dash to panel so whenever you change the date and time notifications position to the right on upstream gnome dash to panel you will find this on the left hand side of all of these and to my eyes for some reason it looks jarring because i'm actually from windows and i am used to having it on the right hand side like this but i want to do it the pop os way i'm going to do it the default way so i like to keep it at center you can also enable the maximize button which i think i will it's a very handy little button and here we have the backgrounds let's so in the last video whenever i tried changing the backgrounds it wouldn't change it if i clicked on workspaces it showed me the backgrounds but in here it didn't so let's let's switch over to something that I like. Let's see. So this is one of my favorite backgrounds. And well, it changed. Look at that. It's cool. When we right click on the desktop, we can see we have new folders. So we can actually add folders, even though this is GNOME. I'm very happy because people need folders, even though well, most of us prefer a clean looking desktop, but if you need it, well, you have the option to use it. You can move it to trash. We can compress one file. We can have properties. Let's go to properties. So this is how the properties looks like for standard pop OS. We're going to delete it and we're going to move on. Okay, let's open back settings. That's the desktop. Now this is the network. We are connected to Ethernet. It shows because I am in a virtual machine and I am connected to Wi-Fi on my actual desktop. Bluetooth, desktop, background, appearance. Now this is light mode. Light mode looks good on Pop! OS. As you can see, we have differences in here and in here. But Let's keep it on dark mode because that's what the default that's what the default is and that's what I like. Coming to workspaces, we can have a fixed number of workspaces, we can specify the number, or we can have a dynamic workspaces. So whenever you click on workspaces and you have an app and you have another workspace and you open something else, let's say the terminal, and after that you click on it, you're going to have another workspace in here. Now, I'm sorry for the jarring lack of animations, but this is probably because it doesn't have hardware acceleration on a virtual machine. I'm sorry for that. Notifications, that's usually you have your do not disturb. You can enable knock screen notifications. You can change on a per app basis. You have your applications. And... You have integration, so you can show notifications. You can, you can have your default handlers. 
so the default handler is the types of files and links that this application can open. It's pretty so much it's pretty much self-explanatory. You have your sound. You have power. Let's make that never. On display, we have our display. So this is set to 1080p inside this virtual machine. We can increase fractional scaling, but I'm not too sure how that's going to perform on a virtual machine. So also my laptop is kind of old, as you saw in the NeoFetch. So mouse speed is cool. Mouse acceleration, natural scrolling. We have the keyboard, we have printers. So this is pretty much your default Pop OS experience. Now, the one thing I have been reserving for you guys is about. Let's go into the about section. Let's explore this. So by default, the device name is Pop OS, which is standard. As you can see, this is quite an old computer. It's five years at this point. And it's still using the X11 windowing system. Now, it's okay. It's perfectly fine that they haven't moved away from X11 to Wayland because, well, if you didn't know, Pop! OS is a very beginner-friendly distro and it does a lot of things out of the box that you would need to, that you would need to configure otherwise. So, for example, you have two ISOs. You can download some with the open source drivers, the message drivers, and another with the NVIDIA proprietary drivers. So, if you download those, well, NVIDIA kind of tends to work better with X11, and there are some issues with Firefox and video production with X11, so I'm glad they are sticking to X11. Now, I can't check if it's actually on Pipewire or Pulse Audio, but we could do that real quick. Let's do sudo apt install pavu control. Oops, that's the wrong password. Okay, we've installed Pavu Control. Now let's go to Applications and see if anything is there. Well, nothing's there. I don't know if this is my fault because I'm running it inside a virtual machine, but let's do, let's try to open it from here. Okay, Pavu Control. So we're probably still on Pulse Audio. We haven't moved to Pipewire yet. And that's okay. We still have time for the 20, 22.04 release, which is going to be the long-term release. Let's go to Files. And let's see. You know, these are the same icons we know Pop! OS to be. Okay, so that's been the first impressions and first look at Pop! OS 21.10. The major thing about Pop! OS 21.10 is it moving over to GNOME 40 and still using the Cosmic Desktop, which I think looks pretty pretty good. I'll probably be switching over to Pop! OS 21.10 when the time comes, and well, see you soon. Peace!